The Chinese Communist Party gains more influence over Europe, but a new effort in the UK is seeking to change that. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Europe's financial elite are in bed with the Chinese Communist Party. The EU abandoned human rights to get a China investment deal. But some in the British government are trying to make sure the UK doesn't make the same mistake. For more, I spoke with Benedict Rogers, the co-founder and chief executive of Hong Kong Watch and deputy chair of the Conservative Party Human Rights Commission. Benedict, as always, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank you. It's always a great pleasure to be with you. Yeah. Well, it seems like every time we talk, there's been another horrible thing that's happened in Hong Kong. Last week, the Hong Kong government arrested more than 50 pro-democracy activists. What do you think of the international response to that? I think the international response has uh, not been anything like what it should be in, in, in proportion to the significance of these arrests. I mean, this was essentially the, the final uh, dismantling of what existed as a democracy movement. That's not to say the democracy movement won't try to carry on, but in formal terms, uh, this, this was a, a major, uh, it, was, it was the biggest uh, mass arrest uh, in one swoop uh, that I think there's ever been in recent years. And the international community's response was, uh, some strong words, uh, but very little else, and, uh, and and even those strong words were rather lost in, uh, you know, the midst of everything else going on. So I definitely want uh, to see more action. Well, it definitely seems like uh, the Communist Party chose to make those arrests on a very uh, particular day, January 6th, almost as if they knew the rest of the world would be distracted by something else. Well, absolutely. January the 6th was... Uh, was a, a pretty dark day, I think, for for democracy in terms of uh, the arrest of people in Hong Kong uh, in the morning Hong Kong time for the simple crime crime in inverted commas of uh, trying to carry out an election, and of course it ended with the the very ugly scenes in Washington D.C. Um, a beacon of democracy around the world um, as well. So whilst I wouldn't compare the two, and I think America's democracy is is strong and Hong Kong's uh, freedoms are being dismantled, um, so it would be wrong to compare them. But nevertheless, they both ha happened on the same day, and um, and that was uh, very very alarming. Uh, you worked on the UK Conservative Party Human Rights Commission report on China, uh, which is called "The Darkness Deepens." Very cheerful, by the way. Uh, the report calls out the mendacity, brutality, inhumanity insecurity and criminality of the Chinese Communist Party. You don't miss words there, do you? <laughs> uh, we don't, um, but it's a report that is based uh, on uh, hours and hours of testimonial evidence that was presented to the Conservative Party Human Rights Commission in, in hearings uh, throughout much of last year, and pages and pages of written evidence. Uh, and that evidence was submitted by a, a wide range of, of sources, um, all essentially saying the same thing and painting a picture uh, of, um, I think I think what's significant about this report is that it there are other reports that highlight uh, particular issues, uh, the, the, the Uyghurs, the situation in Hong Kong, uh, Tibet and, and so on. Uh, there's very few reports that I've come across that put the whole picture together um, and show that uh, the CCP is, you know, is not only committing uh, very likely genocide against the Uyghurs and dismantling democracy in, in Hong Kong. Um, it, it is across the board. It is Christians, it's Falun Gong practitioners, it's uh, civil society activists, lawyers, bloggers, etc. It's a it's an 88 page report um, with a long list of uh, of, of tragedies. And it, it follows, of course, um, the report that the Commission published uh, in 2016, which um, was titled The Darkest Moment. Um, and the reason for that title at that time was that one of the people who gave evidence then said that the situation in 2016 was the darkest moment since the Tiananmen massacre. Um, with hindsight, that title was perhaps a bit premature, and hence the, the, the darkness deepens. I don't know if that's funny or tragic. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, it's it's very tragic in reality, but um, you know you have to keep a sense of humour in in very in very dark times. And we we, we found ourselves as a commission faced with that linguistic challenge, what title do we give this if, if we titled it The Darkest Moment four years ago? Well, so then what's the next one going to be called if it gets worse? I think we, we'll have to come to that when, uh, when we get to it. But uh, any suggestions, let, let me know. <laughs> Just a stream of swears. Uh, well, okay, so hopefully it won't get to that point. So what actions does the report suggest the UK take against the Chinese Communist Party's human rights abuses? Well, it calls, uh, first of all, for a, a comprehensive and coordinated uh, uh, thorough review of UK-China policy across government departments. So not just uh, the Foreign Office, but, but across uh, relevant government departments uh, and, and for a total um, reset and re recalibration of, of that relationship. Uh, it calls for targeted sanctions, uh, which have not yet been applied. Uh, it urges Britain to uh, work with our allies to, to lead the, the establishment of um, a coalition of, of the free world uh, to act as much as possible together. That shouldn't mean the lowest common denominator. I mean, countries should be as robust as they possibly can be. But I think there is a need for uh, the democratic world to unite and coordinate uh, much more than they have been because... Uh, essentially, we need to form a united front to counter the CCP's united front. I like the sound of that. I know recently some UK members of Parliament have suggested a genocide amendment to the UK trade bill. What is that? Yes, uh, so that is an amendment that uh, was pioneered in the House of Lords uh, by people like Lord Alton and quite an amazing range of uh, members of the House of Lords, former cabinet ministers, former the former head of the Royal Air Force, the former head of our intelligence services, uh, former uh, Supreme Court judges, and a whole, whole range of other really distinguished figures. Uh, and it now goes to the House of Commons uh, next week. And what the amendment tries to do is two things. Firstly, to create uh, a mechanism whereby um, people can people who believe there is a case of genocide, and this applies not simply in the case of China, but genocide anywhere, wherever it happens, can come to the High Court of England and Wales uh, and ask the High Court to make a, a preliminary determination as to whether the evidence does suggest genocide or not. Uh, and the consequence of that, if, if the High Court does conclude that it's genocide, uh, uh, th under this amendment, uh, our, the government will be required uh, not to enter into uh, a, a bilateral trade deal with the states that are found to be uh, committing genocide. So if a trade deal is already in place, that should be revoked. Uh, and if it isn't in place, uh, you know, steps towards one should should be stopped. Uh, so that's uh, that's the effect of it. And, and it was designed to answer a very simple uh, problem, which is that for decades now, um, the British government's position, this isn't always the position of other governments, but the British government's position has, has always been, it's not for governments to de determine whether something is genocide, it's for the courts. But the problem in that, uh, that's a perfectly logical, theoretical position to have. Uh, but the problem with it is uh, the international court mechanisms, uh, you know, are very um, unsatisfactory. And particularly in the case of China, you're never going to get a referral um, so this is an amendment designed to uh, get out of that vicious circle. Well, you certainly phrase that in a very polite way. <laughs> um, but so it sounds pretty straightforward. Don't trade with countries that commit genocide. But it seems like the UK exactly. government is not happy about it. So if the genocide amendment passes, would the UK government actually apply that to China? Well, that's the big question. I mean, if it passes and becomes law, uh, and if then uh, a case is brought to the High Court of England and Wales uh, in, in regard to the Uyghurs, for example, and if the High Court concludes that uh, what's happening to the Uyghurs is genocide, then under the law, uh, the UK would not be able to uh, uh, negotiate a trade deal with, with China um, in those circumstances. Now, realistically, there's going to be quite a long time frame to complete all those steps. 
Um, but nevertheless, it's a very important, if it passes, it would send a very important message and it would it would be law that uh, people can go to the court, see if the court decides it's genocide. And if it does, the government must abide by uh, the requirements of that amendment. Well, so speaking of trade, the EU has recently announced a major investment deal with China. How would this deal affect human rights in China? Uh, the EU's deal is one of the most appalling deals that I've uh, seen. Uh, and what was what was so striking about it was um, the timing of it. Firstly, it came just a few days after the European Parliament itself, one of the EU's main institutions, had passed a resolution uh, calling for targeted sanctions, uh, calling for uh, access to the camps in, in Xinjiang, uh, and, and uh, very importantly, calling for any uh, investment deal to uh, have um, particular standards around uh, labor rights. Uh, and just a few days later, the, the uh, European Commission and the member states um, completely ignored the, the European Parliament and went ahead with this uh, deal that has no safeguards on human rights. It has maybe a few sort of vague promises by the CCP to, to move towards signing various international agreements, but we all know this is what to think of the CCP's word. Um, uh, we can't uh, ever take their word for, for anything other than essentially uh, a, an untruth. Um, and so um, it's a deal. And coming just uh, uh, a short time before the uh, the transition in, in the United States as well, it, uh, it sends a pretty bad signal to the new administration in, in the US. So I think it was uh, I think most people agree it's a bad deal in itself and it was very bad timing. And um, uh, I hope that the European Parliament and and other member states will uh, will reconsider it before it's too late. Is it too late to do something about the EU-China investment deal? Well, it has been signed. Um, uh, so in that sense, it probably is too late. But, but I think there are steps that the EU could take. Uh, I mean, I said when the 53 were arrested in Hong Kong, that um, in response to that, the EU should immediately uh, uh, revoke and, and reconsider the the, the deal. Um, unfortunately, they they didn't listen to me. But um, but I uh, I think we need to keep up the pressure on the EU itself and on member states to um, to take action uh, going forward. If they can't revoke the deal, then at least they need to balance it with uh, with other measures, including the application of targeted Mag Magnitsky sanctions. You're part of two upcoming events about human rights in China that people can join online. Can you tell us about those? Yes, yeah, so the first uh, uh, later today on the, the 13th of uh, January is the launch of the Conservative Party Human Rights Commission's uh, report that uh, the, the darkness deepens. And that's an online event. Um, uh, I've tweeted about it. There's an Eventbrite uh, invitation out there. People can register. And at that event, we'll, we will have um, some very amazing speakers. Um, Ian Duncan Smith, who is the former leader of the British Conservative Party, uh, but also the co-chair of IPAC, the in Interparliamentary Alliance on China, uh, will be speaking at it. Um, so will Nathan Law, uh, the highest profile uh, exiled uh, Hong Kong uh, activist, um, Rahima Mahmoud, who's a very high profile Uyghur campaigner, uh, Simon Cheng, who um, you may recall was uh, a British consulate employee in Hong Kong who ended up in jail in, in China and uh, suffering some uh, horrific uh, torture there. Uh, uh, and um, uh, Dr. Tang Biao, a, a prominent uh, uh, mainland Chinese exiled uh, lawyer and an activist, um, and, and I'll say a few words as well. So that's the the lineup uh, at that event, uh, and then uh, tomorrow, Thursday, the fourteenth of January, um, the Macdonald Laurier Institute uh, think tank in Canada, together with uh, Hong Kong Watch, IPAC, and and a number of others, has a a, a big online um, conference on human rights in China as a whole. Uh, uh, and with a number of um, politicians and prominent uh, activists speaking at, at that and looking at what are the ways forward uh, to uh, addressing um, human rights in China. 
Well, I'll definitely put links to those events below, and I hope everyone watching definitely checks that out. Uh, Benedict, it's always great to have you on. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for watching. I put the links to those events in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.